while back, I got this assortment of Zener diodes in a mailbag. And I remember at the time that the labeling on the packages was a little bit confusing. Not entirely sure what they all are. Some of them make sense. Um, like that one looks like it's a th one watt three V something or other. Um, eight, eight G two, eight point two volts. Um, so some of them, some of them make sense. Some of them are a little bit strange. This one, it looks like even who was, whoever was labeling it in China, wasn't quite sure what was going on. So I'm going to spend some time today figuring them out, figuring out a way to test them, exploring ways of testing them. Um, trying to figure out what they all are using, using various different methods just to, uh, to explore those methods and also, um, maybe tinker around with them a little bit and test some of them. So let's just start. This one is marked one watt 24 V with some scribbles on it. So I'm assuming it's 24 volt. Many of them actually have one watt or one W written on them. I assume that means one watt. The listing showed them as one watt and actually I printed out part of the listing here. Um, so here's what I actually bought. 260 diodes, uh, one watt between 3.3 .3 and 39 volts assortment kit. There's 10 in each bag. So if my math is correct, that means I've got 26 different values and there's all the values there. Um, so they are all one watt and further down in the listing, there was this chart, which I printed on the same piece of paper because I'm cheap actually. Uh, and it shows part numbers. That's interesting. So that would make my determining what the hell these are a lot easier. Let's, uh, there's one that I actually opened up during my mailbag. Oh, that's that same one. That's okay. Now let's see if there is actually a visible part number on these things. These little glass bodied diodes are a real pain to try and read even when they do have information written on them. So I'm going to zoom in as tight as I can here. It looks like there is a little bit of writing on them. Well, there is. Four, seven, four, nine, A. Uh, four, seven, Four, nine, 24 volts, 24 volts. Okay. Well, that's the easiest and least mysterious way of telling what they are. Okay. Um, I wasn't actually expecting that. I guess I should check these things before I turn the camera on. Whatever. Let's test some anyways. Just let's assume that that didn't happen. Um, I do have a list of what I should expect to have in, uh, in the various different values here. Um, let's just pick another random bag. Is that one that says three V six. So 3.6 volts. Now, so Zener diodes, um, I guess let's just, back up a little bit for people who aren't super familiar with them. Um, a normal diode, um, as the diagram indicates, only lets voltage go through in one way. So if you have voltage set up like that, positive on that side, negative on that side, the voltage will pass. Um, there'll be a slight voltage drop in there. Uh, usually, 0.6.7 volts in that range. Um, for silicon diodes, Schottky diodes are closer to 0.2.3 volts. But if you have your voltage set up that way, um, the current does not flow. It blocks. That's the whole point of a diode, right? So 
a Zener diode. I drew those the wrong way. They should be that way and that way. Doesn't matter too much. I'm sure it matters, but it doesn't matter really. So a Zener voltage, or a Zener diode set up this way, pause it on this side. It still has that 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volt drop, forward drop against it. Now you go the other direction and it acts like a normal diode until it gets to the voltage that it's set for, the Zener voltage. Um, so your input voltage is rising, rising, rising. Uh, okay. And the output voltage is just staying. Uh, let's get another color. The output voltage is staying flat until this hits the Zener voltage. Let's just draw that continuing to increase. When it does hit the Zener voltage, all of a sudden your diode starts conducting. Why is that useful? Well, that can give you a stable, predictable reference voltage for things like power supplies, or if you've got a comparator that's supposed to be checking against something that's happening. Um, so the, uh, uh, the, the, the simple archaic type, uh, Zener controlled power supply, you got your unknown input voltage here coming in. Um, you go through a resistor, uh, and then the Zener diode there. So that's going to start conducting at some voltage. This is just a current limiting diode, but you've also created a voltage divider. So right there, the voltage is going to be whatever that Zener voltage is for this thing. So in a, in a low tech old school power supply or a reg series regulator, you have your basic NPN transistor there using that voltage as its base voltage. And then the voltage or whatever it, uh, turns on high enough to satisfy that voltage. And the output voltage is going to be this voltage plus, sorry, uh, minus the base, uh, emitter voltage, which is typically 0.6 volts. So if this is a 24 volt Zener, like that one there, then this, assuming that this voltage is higher than 24 volts, this output voltage will be 24 minus 0.6. So 23.4 volts, and it will still stay stable if this voltage wanders around, if it gets too carried away, um, and drops below 24 volts, then obviously this is going to drop below its normal voltage. Um, if it goes over the damage voltage of this transistor, um, consult your local data sheet. Um, then obviously things are going to go horribly awry, but that's very basic, basic regular. That's one of the places that you, that you'll see it in a lot of old circuits, a lot of newer circuits. You'll see it in, uh, switching power supplies in the feedback circuit. So on the low voltage or secondary side, um, do I have a switching power supply kicking around here? Uh, not that one. Hang on. No, I can't put my hands on one quickly. Um, well, let's just look at, uh, look at a schematic of one that I found on the internet. Here's a random, um, switch mode power supply that I found online. Um, I'm not even sure what language that's in. doesn't matter. Notice on the bottom right hand side, on the secondary side of the transformer there, um, there is the optocoupler and in series with the LED side of the optocoupler is an 11.2 volt Zener diode. 
what that is doing and then in series with that is a uh, is a current limiting resistor so what that is doing is basically when the voltage on the output rises above it's 11.2 volts plus presumably the 0.8 volt forward voltage of the LED then the LED turns on um, goes uh, shines its light through the optocoupler to the other side and starts shutting down the voltage on the primary side of the transformer which brings the voltage back down into check and the zener diode uh, drops below its voltage turns off the led in the optocoupler and that's how it regulates its output voltage um, depend so no matter what the current is doing it's going to uh, try and maintain that output voltage at um, again 11.2 volts plus the LEDs voltage drop um, so that's that's one very common use these days of Zener diodes the other uh, the other common use is in a comparator circuit if you want to compare any threshold voltage such as in this little circuit here um, so when it's using an op amp as a comparator but whatever it's compared to nonetheless so basically it's holding the uh, non-inverting input uh, through R3 and the, the Zener diode at 9.1 volts, which is the Zener's voltage. And again, that 100k resistor uh, R3 is just current limiting and it's creating a voltage divider. Um, if we assume, or if we picture R1 and R2 as a potentiometer, instead of the, uh, the fixed resistors that they show there, then when the a uh, voltage created by that voltage divider uh, crosses the threshold it's going to turn on and off that uh, to MOSFET on the output and turn on or off whatever the circuit is okay so that's the, be the short answer of why do you want to use a Zener diode there's a lot of other reasons too but uh, that aside let's take a closer look at them if you don't have the part number written on them like these or they're smudged or whatever how do you know uh, what voltage they are this is what I was originally going to do for this video but now that I realized that they do all have the number written on them and from the listing I do have all the part numbers then this is kind of pointless for what I was going to do but let's go through it anyway just just for the for the fun of it and the experience so for most multimeters have a diode test mode even this cheapest uh, multimeter that anybody's ever got their hands on has that and of course the more expensive ones do as well um, there we go but just for fun let's uh, uh put this one no, that's the 24 volts not play with that one right now okay 4.7 volt let's use one of those get into the bag let's throw this into the breadboard just so i don't fumble and stumble and drop it on the ground okay so there we go uh black band is on that side so i put this into diode test and it should just look like a normal diode yeah uh 627 millivolts uh, voltage drop showing on the meter you see that less glary that way oh. there okay so but we uh reverse bias it and nothing happens so that looks just like a normal diode but wait it's supposed to break down to 4.7 volts and and uh conduct yes it is this meter isn't putting that much voltage onto the probes try this one because I know it's got a 9 volt battery in it so maybe it can do it so again uh, in normal so that one's showing 800 uh, millivolts for the forward voltage drop and in reverse nope it's still not conducting okay well what else can we do let's try one of these 
Maybe it's got enough jam. It's got a nine volt battery. It shows it as forward voltage of 4.3 volts. Um, and so, uh, 789 millivolts the other way. So that's cool. That's showing us that it is a 4.3 volt Zener diode. And that actually called it 4.7 on there. Interesting. Let's just set that aside. But let's try our 24 volt Zener here. Uh, 24 volts. Now let's use a different, different higher voltage. How about a 13 volt one? Regard, uh, I'll have a reason for that shortly. Honest, stick with me here. So, throw that guy in there. Notice I'm not too concerned about which polarity I put it in, especially into this tester, because it's brainiac enough to know the difference. So this just shows as a normal diode with a forward voltage of 800 millivolts, but it's not showing any reverse because they say these are 13 volt Zeners and this thing is only powered by a nine volt battery. So how do we test the higher voltage ones? Well, let's throw that back in the breadboard. Remember the circuits we were looking at earlier um, to generate, to use this as a reference voltage, you essentially use it as one of the uh, two voltage drops in a voltage divider. So let's grab a resistor. Uh, we don't need too much current for this. Let's, let's use 10 K. All you need is enough of a resistance to, uh, to prevent it from overloading. And these things are one watt. Um, got my calculator. Got my Ohm's Law cheat sheet here. Let's see what that 10 key resistor is going to do if, uh, well, uh, these could be any, I, I know what this one is, but for the purposes of the experiment here, this could be any voltage from three volts up to 40 volts. So let's use 40 volts and let's use a 10 K and let's, uh, see what our current is. So um, 40 volts squared. So 40 times 40 is that over 10,000 ohms is 0.16 of a watt. That's not going to hurt us at all. Right then. So we want this diode to be reverse biased, which means that the negative voltage needs to go on that side and the positive voltage needs to go on that side. And in the power supply over here, we need to have a voltage sufficiently high. So let's, oops, let's crank that guy up. Now this power supply over here is a buck regulator, which is being powered off a laptop power supply. So the highest voltage it's going to put out is around 18 volts. So I'll turn that on and then we'll grab a voltmeter and measure the voltage drop across this guy. 12.49 for the 13 volt Zener. Okay. Let's try it with a different meter just in case we don't trust that one. But I'm going to be going to bet that it's 12.52. Okay. That's pretty close. You know what? Let's try this with a little bit lower resistance. Let's try it with uh, where's it uh, I got here? Uh, 4.7 K instead of 10 K. That's not going to, that's not going to blow anything up still. It's still going to be less than half a watt, right? 
based on their calculations from before but it's going to work that zener a little harder 12.57 pretty much no difference so it seems that a wide range of currents is going to uh, provide the same voltage that's nice um, let's try this on the higher voltage zener um, or let's just pick one at random. So we do have to make sure that we have it in here in a reverse bias direction. Although the current limiting resistor is going to prevent it from, from blowing up completely. So what have we got here? 4.6, 4.59, And now let's see what the bag said. 4.7. Yay. Okay, so as long as you've got more voltage on your power supply than what the Zener's uh, voltage is, you can verify any Zener diode with just that simple little test rig. You don't need anything fancy at all. So now that we know, you know that I've got my little test rig figured out, I'm going to get back to my original task before I figured out that there was a lot easier ways to do it. Um, and that is trying to figure out some of these allegedly scrawled packages. I could check and use my magnifying glass and go cross-eyed trying to read it, but this is just so quick and easy. Ten volts. And that says I should have a ten volt one in my in my assortment. So that's probably what that scribble uh, scribble says. Where my pen go. Seven V F is what it looks like to me. Anyways, I'm just going to keep doing this and doing this. Oh yeah, that. Um, tonight's beer is Bob Cajun's Starry Night Chocolate Stout from Bob Cajun Brewing in Ontario, which any Canadian will know exactly where Bob Cajun is. Um, so yeah, that's uh. That's how I'm going to spend the rest of my evening. Hope you uh, found something vaguely interesting in my disjointed, unscripted, weird ramblings. 7.6 volts. How about 7.5? Thanks for watching. Um, I will talk to you later with... Hopefully something a bit more coherent and uh, maybe something interesting next week. Who knows? Till then, talk to you later.